Brothers and sisters, today the legislative session is continuing. We have about another month uh, for bills to make it to the floor for floor action, and hopefully we'll be able to call it a year and have meaningful legislation on the books for the working people of Washington State. While it has felt like it has been much longer than the 74 days that we've done so far, I feel confident that we already have some good things heading to the governor's desk for his signature. One of these is the House Flipper Bill 5267, which will require the properties being flipped within 12 months have the electrical work permitted, done by a licensed electrician, and inspected. This will save untold thousands of folks heartache with buying properties that they have no idea what was done. Preemption for health care coverage based upon COVID is another bill that is running through. Worker protections around COVID and unemployment insurance are slated into several bills. Uh, there's a bill moving forward adjusting prison to post-secondary pathways, uh, including recognition of apprenticeship programs as a viable post-secondary pathway for folks. That's awesome. We also have Senate Bill 5226, which will help our pre-apprenticeship and apprenticeship programs. This will help to extinguish uh, driving with license suspended charges and other historically race-based issues that make it harder for some folks to make uh, and be a qualified applicant for our programs. There's also an expansion of the definition of family member within one of the bills to allow more flexibility for paid family medical leave purposes for workers in Washington State. So all those bills and more, plus various bills moving forward around transportation. We need to get the transportation package funded. There are six or seven floating around right now. They're gonna be going to the floor in the coming weeks. A lot of debate's gonna happen. Uh, we need a transportation package to move, to get the budget secured and everything else. All this in uh, light of federal funding coming to the state and what we can do with that. So I want you to know that uh, we need to make transportation packages viable and uh, figure out how to best fund them while meeting the demand to address climate change. IBW is working hard for inclusion in all of these bills or any language to make sure that any electrical vehicle infrastructure work is covered for my brothers and sisters. The governor has publicly stated that effective March 31st, all construction workers will be eligible for the COVID-19 vaccine. I would strongly encourage everyone to make sure to get this accomplished before the May 1st date. May 1st, all Washingtonians 16 years old and above are eligible. Uh, that's gonna make it much tougher to secure an appointment. By that time, it will actually be potentially much harder to schedule an appointment. So on March 31st, I encourage all of you to go to the link provided on the screen to find an appointment location and time that will work for you. And don't forget, two of the current vaccinations will require two separate dates and two separate shots. The Labor Council strongly encourages folks to take their survey so we can get a picture of how our unionized workforce is doing in Washington State in regards to COVID-19. Folks, this is serious. In Paris, ICUs are now full. Italy just went into another lockdown. The UK is extending their lockdown past Easter. And in the United States of America, as we've all seen on the news, spring break no masks. Um, guys, the bug is still out there. It's trying to do what bugs do, mutate to stay alive. Variants are out there. Please be smart and make sure you get a vaccine. Thank you very much. As always, please be smart. Be kind to one another. Take care of one another. Wear your masks and darn it, go get your vaccine. Thank you. Be well. Shh.